Well, today on WCR Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking to two people, one new, one veteran. We're going to ask them the same questions and see how they answer. It's going to be a good one. It should be pretty fun to compare answers, so I hope you guys stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. I hope you enjoy everything. We got a pretty cool, interesting episode put together to you for today, but we have 170 episodes. We've been doing this for three years. Every single Friday, you got a ton of content. What are you doing? Go catch up. Uh, start binge watching and let me know if you are binge watching and more importantly if you are one of the cool kids one of the nation somebody who watches or listens to every episode gives the thumbs up on the videos on youtube you've left us a review on itunes and more importantly you buy your supplies through me huh shameless plug well what's up cool kid certified cool kid it's like a virtual high five thank you it is because of you that i get to buy name brand hair gel that's what somebody said. It's Dove. It's not that fancy. But anyway, I really, really appreciate it. If you guys want to put your orders in through me, my number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. So call me, text me, put it all in your cart. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Run it. And I will verify an address and run it for you. It's just that easy. It doesn't cost you anything extra to have me put it in for you. It's a virtual high five. And hopefully I make it super, 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 super easy. So again, 862-312-2026 is my number. Save it. That's a sell. If you got questions too, guys, ask away. I don't know everything, but if you got questions, I'd love to help. Love to kind of be a partner with a lot of people. So thank you. Thank you either way. But today we have a really pretty cool episode that, uh, well, I think it's pretty cool. I don't know if you will, but it, it it's very interesting either way. But we took two people. We took somebody who's been in business for like, literally a couple months and we took somebody who's been in business for literally years and years and years and we asked them the same questions now i personally have been in the business for about 15 years so for me i was more on the peter artusa side where a lot of those questions i'm like yeah that makes sense hearing cj talk about the new ones was pretty interesting it's just cool to see as you go through there's a lot of questions that the answers to them change over time, right? Like one of the questions I had that we didn't end up asking was like, what would a thousand dollar job mean to you? Well, and somebody in the, in the industry for a long time would be like a thousand dollar job. That's, you know, a decent job. I'd, I'd be happy with that. The person who's brand new, like a thousand dollar job. Holy cow, man. I would, I, I couldn't believe it, man. That'd be my only client. Like, I, right. There's a different side to each of it in a different position where you are in business it really really does make uh, a difference but it's cool it's cool to kind of compare both of them this episode we're going to go back between uh questions on each of them but at the very end write down the questions if you're on youtube put your answers down on youtube i would love to see it in the comments just comment anyway i have not seen a lot of comments coming through and i would love to see them uh, but either way, with no more further ado, fancy word, then here you go. We're talking to two different window cleaners. Let's let's do it. And we're here with CJ. What up, man? What's up, Jersey? Not much, not much. But you're a newbie. You're like wet behind the ears, fresh in the industry. If anybody doesn't know you, tell us kind of about you, how long you've been in business. Just tell us it all. Yeah, man. So I started my company March 8th of this year, 2020. Uh, took a little while to get started officially. We had a shutdown like a week and a half after I officially filed my business. And then the shutdown happened. So I got a little bit of a late start this year. And uh, so far, it's been okay, though. Um, making a lot of connections. And uh, this year is still going to be a plus for us, for sure. Nice. Uh, nice. I love it. If you can make it through this, you're going to be anything that comes down the road. You'd be like, yeah, it's all right. I started in 2020 and people are like, what? <laughs> like yeah. the 2008 stuff that happened, you know, that was like the last one before this. So yeah. And Peter Artusa, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? How are you? Good. I am good. I'm good. So if anybody doesn't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, tell us your history, give us it all. 
All right, well, retired police officer after 22 years, thank God for that. Uh, as soon as I retired from the police department, I started a window cleaning, blind cleaning business called A Sparkling View. Um, the blind cleaning really didn't take off and I sold that end of the business, but the window cleaning did and a few acquisitions. And then the big one was when I purchased all county window cleaning from Chris. We all know our fearless leader, Chris, and uh, been growing the business ever since. And we do blind sales, we do window cleaning, power washing, gutter cleaning, roof cleaning, you name it, and we do it. And I've been doing that since 2008. Nice, and how many guys do you run in the peak? Typically, we're running 25 on the road and six in my office, but due to the events of 2020, I'm running 17 on the road right now currently, and I'm doing three in the office, and we're doing just fine. Wow, crazy. Yeah. Well, cool. So we got a couple questions for you. Let's start off with number one, and what does a successful company look like to you? Man, success, uh, perseverance, no doubt. Uh, 2020 has been the test for sure. Um, proper planning and uh, making sure you do all of your legwork beforehand, uh, planning everything out, double checking things because it's uh, it could be a, a game ender if you don't plan it out beforehand. So uh, anything you're gonna invest, make sure it's going to the proper place, proper areas, and uh, that way you can make your year and your company uh, a success. Nice, nice. Most people, when they're new, don't quite understand the benefit to that. They just like, well, we're seeing what goes on. And then when I get bigger, then I'll do that. And then by then it's too late and you've built a crappy kind of, you know, uh, uh, foundation for everything to be built on. Yeah, man, you build that foundation on sand and not solid rock. I mean, you could have a uh, downward spiral before you know it. Real quick, real quick. Yeah. What does a successful company look like to you? Hmm. Well, that depends on how you want to monitor success. I mean, success can come in many different ways. Um, in my opinion, it's not always about being, you know, having the most money, having the biggest toys, having the biggest trucks. It's really about a state of mind that you're in and running a company to do what you said you would do constantly. Um, and you doing that with clarity and focus, care, ease, and grace. Nice, nice. So it's more the how you do things than what you actually accomplish. Correct. I always said to myself, you know, I did, like I said, I did 22 years as a cop. And those 22 years, 15 of them were canine. I was a canine officer. And I did two years undercover buying drugs. I was six months in a high school, as a, I'm sorry, three months in a high school as a student. And I had a good career, but it was time to go. And thank God I did with the current events that are going on today. And I always said that if I ever became successful, because I, I know a lot of very successful people in our community and, and throughout the United States now, that I would always want to give back. And what it's done for me today is actually allows me to give back to community. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of sponsoring events, uh, donating money to charities. We do a lot of that. And I enjoy doing that. And it's important. I mean, I, I sit on a board called Heroes Indeed. It's a local board that is for a fallen soldier that was killed in the line of duty. I'm, I'm on that board. I'm on the board for the IWCA. And my focus is really starting to turn to running boards and, and helping the community as a whole. And, you know, that's another way you can measure success. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, number two, the question is, what's your biggest challenge right now? Man, being a one-man band, it's a uh hard to become more efficient. Um, just bought my first water fed pull system that has helped a ton. 
uh, not plugging anything, but man, the X2 is awesome. Um, so that's been a big help. And then just trying to stay consistent with work, um, gaining new clients and just making sure that work is constantly coming in. Um, so that's been tough, but making connections has been a big help to that. Uh, networking with other window washers, um, other project managers and uh, stuff like that has been a huge help to uh, getting me over that kind of hurdle. So it's been yeah. awesome. The longer you're in business, you forget that it's the people you know, because you just know people. Like you yeah. forget that there's that one point, you know, nobody, you know, nobody yeah. in the industry, you know, nobody to sell to, you know, no property managers, you have nobody to bounce ideas, ideas off of. You're just almost in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. And starting the conversation, I'm not a big talker. I don't go out of my box very much, but starting a conversation with somebody has really been helpful because you never know the connections that they have. And uh, I think that has been a big success or a big part of the success of this 2020 year for me so far. Well, what is your biggest challenge right now? Uh, the biggest challenge right now is to get rid of 2020 and see what 21 brings. Um, 20 has with COVID, it was a little nerve wracking when it first hit. I mean, we lost 90% of our storefront accounts and a lot of our residentials just fell off the earth, kind of reinvented the company, you know, fell into the whole out, not the indoor, but the outdoor sanitizing, um, using, having a lot of people in the industry kind of showing me the way to go and kind of reinvented all county. And we've gained back probably 75% of our lost storefronts now. Um, residential, we were doing outside onlys and that kind of went to the wayside. I refitted all my people. Everyone's got, you know, the, the protective wear, they got the mask and, you know, we're doing all right now. So what my biggest challenge today will be is getting out of this COVID mindset and just continuing business and, and growing the company as I do every year. Yeah, it, it's been so smooth up until this, I don't even want to call it a fork in the road. This is like a wall in the road where, like you said, you had to pivot to kind of stay alive and, and get through it. And I'm ready for it to be done. I can tell you that much. You know, it's, it's you don't know what to believe. I'll, I'll just keep it at that. You yeah. really, without getting any political or anything like that, you just today do not know what to believe. So I yep. just really kind of want this to get behind us and, and let's open up business and, and really just start, you know, not only our business, everyone's business. I, I have friends of mine that are suffering with the businesses that they have. And, you know, they, a lot of my friends own restaurants. And, you know, they're worried about what the winter is going to bring. They're taking advantage of outdoor seating now, but what's the winter going to bring for them? Yeah. What is your most important thing to you personally as a business owner? Like personally, what is it that's most important or most valuable to you? Uh, again, just going back to being a one man band in a new company, a small business, just my reputation. Um, that is huge. You know, uh, a couple of the neighborhoods and stuff have already caught word. Um, still trying to get my first uh, Google review. So trying to keep my reputation up and make sure the customers are as happy as possible, man. Keeping them happy can go a long way both now and in the future. So uh, just making sure that that is on point every single job. Yeah. Referrals are so huge. They're, they're the number one thing, no matter how much you're spending 10, $20,000 a month in advertising, you literally are still going to get 50% referrals no matter what. Like that's what happens when the ball of business starts rolling. Absolutely, man. Speaking of referrals, uh, a little information. I just landed something with uh, somebody who is connected very heavily to a professional sports team and they take care of a lot of higher end stuff. And that has been a great connection to have so far. So that nice. attests to that. It goes a long way. It's like your first connection, man. That's like, <laughs> that's exciting. It's exciting. It is. It is, man, for sure. For sure. I'll, I love it. Well, what is the most important thing to you personally as a small business owner? I'm sorry? What's the most important thing personally to you as a small business owner? Uh, like I said earlier, being able to get back to my community. That's what it's really about. I mean, at, at the beginning, it was building a business, 
making a name, making a brand for myself. All County kind of already had a brand. Um, Chris did an outstanding job on that. So we kind of just followed his footsteps. We did some minor changes here and there. Um, but right now it's just to, to be successful and just keep moving. Yeah. Well, number four, what is your personal fear in business? The unknown, the unknown of my first year, not knowing what that first tax season is going to bring, not knowing uh, if I'm budgeting correctly for winter, not knowing if my route is thick enough or, or solid enough to get me through what I need to get through. Uh, the unknowns are a big thing, but kind of going back to planning and making sure you've done your legwork ahead of time. Hopefully that'll, that'll help take care of those unknowns in the future. Yeah. You're, you're in, you're in somebody else's basement right now with a flashlight. Like you don't know what's down there. You think, you know, but you don't, and yeah. it's just exploring everything. Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing where the traps are or anything that's unexpected, <laughs> man. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I, I know with winter, you're never, for the first few years, even if you want to be planned and you sound like you're really focused on that, so I think you're going to do great. But it's really hard because the first couple of years, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't quite understand this or I didn't quite understand. And then you're in winter and there's nothing to do. You can't advertise in winter to get out of winter. You just have to kind of wait for winter to end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a big fear going into it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what is a personal... Or let me rephrase that. What is your personal fear in business? Uh, <laughs> 2020 aside, what's your personal fear? What do you wake up scared about in your own business? I, I'm, not, I'm not really afraid of anything in business, to tell you the yeah. truth. I mean, I don't want to sound cocky or, or sound like, a, you know, whatever, but there's nothing I fear in business because no matter what comes along, you could always think of a way to rectify it and to make it better. So yeah. my only fear would be probably losing my personal health and not being able to be in my business. That's the only thing that, that would really scare me at this point. Yeah. It's, it's like soldiers who are on the front lines and they were in combat, heavy, heavy combat. They come back scared of nothing because they've seen it all. It's kind of the same thing as, as a veteran in business, you've almost seen it all. And you understand that even when you had the worst of your times, it still got better. You still got through and you knew that it's ups and downs. You're, you're to that point where that's an understanding almost. Well, and also, you know, my past career kind of gave me that mindset that, you know, you, you go into it and there's always a solution to every problem that you can reach. There yeah. really is. Yeah. And number five, what is the easiest thing to do in business? What's been the easiest thing so far for you? Oh, man. Oh, man. The easiest thing? Uh, you know, as much as I'm not a get outside my comfort zone type of guy, the easiest thing I think has been making connections. I've networked with uh, a handful of different window cleaners just in the surrounding area and, uh, you know, making friends with them, just keeping it casual. I think you've said to talk shop just keeping it lighthearted and, and, you know, building those uh, relationships has come easier than I thought it would. You know, once you get outside your box, you know, you're, you're exploring and learning a ton of new stuff. So that's, that's come a lot easier for me than I thought and making the connections with different property managers and uh, you know, the sporting team thing. I mean, that's, that's come actually a lot easier than what I thought it would. Nice. Yeah. And that's one of the things that uh, I know I've seen you a lot of places as far as Facebook groups and, and videos and different things, and you're soaking it all in, which is huge. Like your knowledge base already by taking an active role and trying to network and talk to people and get on that is so much farther than some guy who's not, you know, those guys will be two years in before they're to the level you are. Yeah, man. And I think that's the mistake, or I think that's something that a lot of people take for granted. You know, all the Facebook groups, the, you know, the, this area, this area, this area, garage sale groups, anybody asking for tips and pointers, if you've already made a connection with somebody outside and you can refer them, just you referring them, they see your name, they recognize you. I've had three or four different um, people asking for quotes just because they saw me comment on something else. So that, do not take that for granted. That has been huge. And I agree with you. You know, that has been key to me being at least a little bit successful this first year. Nice. And for you, what is the easiest thing to do in business? 
Well, I love everything I do with all county with social media. I, that's the easiest for me. Coming up with my daily ads, coming up with my daily posts, running the social media end of all county, which is not only social media, but it's you know my mailings and, and everything else we do, all the networking I do, uh, all the ch we belong to eight chambers of commerce. I'm still very active with all those chambers of commerce. Uh, obviously, networking events are no longer in existence, um, but we've done three virtual home shows already this year, and they actually uh, decided they're going for a real home show on the 26th, the 26th of this month. So we're 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 hoping we're hoping, and Fingers I down. like that end of my business, and that's that's the easiest for me. Yeah, well, if people know you, they know that uh, some may call you a talker. I don't. Some may. Some <laughs> no, may. No, no, come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, man, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I like to hear the back and forth between um, somebody like you who's seasoned, who's a veteran, who has been there, done that, and somebody who is brand new. So I definitely appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, hopefully we, things will get better here in 2020. And uh, hopefully you're at your home show pretty soon. Yeah, and I just hope that, you know, message everyone, just, you know, don't give up and yeah. don't start adding services out of desperation. Yeah. Because it's, a, it's almost a, a footprint to fail if you're doing it that way. Do things out of need, not desperation. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Awesome advice. Thank you. Thank you, Peter Artusa, uh, All County Window Cleaning, one of the man, uh, the myth, the legend himself. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Josh. Have a great day, Bob. You too. Well, I wish you all the luck. Being new is exciting as it is scary, so it's a fun, fun adventure. Uh, I, I envy you. You, you. It's like having kids, you know, in that beginning. Yeah. You're like, oh, having a baby is so tough, but when you look at it later, you're like, oh, man, those are some good years. It's the same thing. Like, you have a lot of stuff to figure out even if you learn it online, there's a lot of stuff to kind of get yourself, but it's exciting. You know, you'll never be at the same position. You'll never be the exact same size business as you are right now ever again. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. A lot of success comes from you too, watching the podcast and listening to all that stuff. Steve-O, the big WCR family behind you guys, that has been a huge success, a uh, big help to the success, all the form pages and stuff. So, so I really, really do appreciate that. And uh, if I could stress anything to anybody else starting, take advantage of all of that stuff. All of it. It helps hugely. Yeah. Knowledge is free and it's the most valuable thing, you know. And I like the hat. I have to just put that on <laughs> the best hat in the industry. WCR, man. I appreciate it. I love it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Jersey. Take care. Man, see, I'm telling you, stuff like this is interesting to see how they answer everything, right? Where do they come from? Where's their brain at? How are things different between generations of window cleaners? Now, here's the other thing. When Peter was in business, like I was, when we started, there was no technology. There was none of this, like, every answer to any question is available online. There wasn't that, right? Now it's not, did you ask the question? It's what questions did you ask? Back then, you had to figure out a lot on your own. So our timing to become something bigger something better something greater took a lot longer because we had to figure it out we had a lot of trials and errors trial and errors <laughs> right we screwed a lot of things up uh there was one convention every year it was called the picnic in wisconsin that was it uh, it was great but there was like 200 people we sat around ate corn and the talk shop for a few minutes and it was great that was it there was email group. That was all that was existing. There was no forums or any of this other stuff. So it's come such a long way. If you're new in business, understand this. You have the power at your fingertips. You're watching this or listening to this. So first off, you already understand the, 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 the value of power, the value of information. You're doing it. You're doing it right. But there's so much information out there. Learn from everyone. Learn their mistakes and uh, you will all of a sudden be in this for 15 years and it will just fly by. It is like I said, it's, it's like having a kid where you're like, oh man, all I want them to do is walk. And then when they start walking, you're like, oh man, remember the good old days when they didn't walk? Same thing with talking, right? 
So you, you go a year trying to get your kids to talk and then 17 more years trying to make them shut up. <laughs> Feel free to use that one. Feel free to use that one. If it makes you feel any better, I have two daughters in my house. So for me, you know, there's a lot more talking. Yes, that was a comment. It's me and my boy dog. We just sit there and like air out the estrogen in our house. But anyway, anyway, uh, it was an awesome episode. I really digged it. Also, if you guys have any ideas for uh, new episodes, something f- funky, something fresh, let me know. Jersey at windowcleaner.com. And I want to be your rep. Please do let me put your orders in. This is a shameless plug again, but I really, really do. Every order you put in, little, big, it doesn't matter. I want to be your rep. That's how I make my cheddar. I want everybody. I want you guys all. And uh, I really, really genuinely appreciate it. It really is a big thank you uh, from anybody who lets me put their order in. Um, You know, sending me a text and making sure that I get the sale. That's huge. That really does mean a lot. So I really do... But I do really appreciate it, guys, uh, when you let me do that. But my number is 862-312-2026, and that is a cell phone. Save that number, um, call me, text me, whatever, and uh, we'll go from there. So, Thank you very much for watching. Uh, Until next week, go out there and be out.